Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft. And joining me right now is Alex Wiley. He's the president and CEO of Liberty Stream Infrastructure Partners. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you LIB on the TSX Venture and VLTLF on the OTCQB. And Liberty Stream Infrastructure Partners will be presenting at our upcoming investor conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase Toronto, in partnership with Microcap Club, taking place October 21 through 23, 2025, at the Arcadian Loft in downtown Toronto. For more information, register to meet with Alex and the team at our event. Please register to attend at planetmicrocapshowcase.com. And with that, Alex, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks to see you. Absolutely. It's great to see you too. And, and thank you for uh, coming to uh, share the story at uh, our upcoming conference. But, uh, you know, look, I, I thought it would be a good idea prior to the event for us to have a quick chat to, to better understand the, the story before even going in. So for those that aren't familiar with Liberty Stream, can you give us that quick overview and history of the company? Okay. So Liberty Stream is focused on two principles. The first one was technology. We felt it was critical to develop our own technology to do our own extraction. It's key because when you've got your own technology, you can keep improving it. The second principle was we wanted to focus where there's existing water production today. Down in Texas, the largest oil fields, some of the largest oil fields in the world are in Texas and they produce a lot of water. The fields here produce up to 20 million barrels a day of water, which is the equivalent of about 200,000 tons per annum of production. So we wanted to focus where the water is today so that we can get into production sooner. Very good. So, I mean, what, what would you say makes Liberty Stream unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? You know, I, I've interviewed a few lithium companies over the years, you know, the exploration in Argentina, all this kind of stuff. So what sets you apart from some of the uh, the explorers and then also maybe even some of the producers out there? Yeah, I mean, a key fundamental difference between us and a lot of the others is infrastructure. So for us, the infrastructure is built. The oil and gas industry today moves water in Texas. So that means we don't have to build our own infrastructure. To put that into perspective, for us to get, you know, processing our first thousand tons per annum, which is about a $20 million capex for us, we don't have to build infrastructure. Now, if we didn't have this in place, that 20 million balloons up to a couple hundred million. So having the infrastructure, having the water today at our disposal allows us to focus on what we do best, which is lithium extraction. Very good. And what was your background prior to becoming a president CEO here? I mean, I've been focused in the oil and gas industry for a long time. And people say, well, why is an oil and gas guy doing lithium mining? Because most folks are from the mining industry. Well, we know that the largest source of water today in the U.S. is from the oil and gas industry. So it makes sense that an oil and gas guy is involved with lithium extraction. I've run multiple oil and gas companies in my past, so understand the industry, understand the players, understand how it works. Uh, this is business number eight for me, so I've been around a few times and really understand what it takes to build a business. And look, also taking a couple steps back here, for those that aren't familiar with the relationship between oil and gas and lithium extraction, can you give us a quick overview of what that relationship is? You bet. For every barrel of oil that's produced down here in Texas, there's three barrels of water produced. Now, the oil companies can't sell that oil until they do something with the water. So what ends up happening is there's a very elaborate system of pipelines and disposal for water in Texas. So that down here, there's about 6 million barrels of oil being produced. That equates to 20 million barrels a day of water being produced. It is the largest untapped resource for lithium that I've seen in the world. And it's all a function of water that's being produced today in the oil and gas industry. Very good. So basically, in essence, you know, your technology allows to extract the lithium from the basically wastewater, it, it, right. so to speak, right? That's exactly what it is. And, and that that hits it head on. That's, so the industry has always thought of water as a waste product. And we've looked at it and said, no, there's a huge opportunity here. There's lithium in that brine, that oil field brine that produced water. And so we developed our technology specifically around extracting lithium from that oil field produced water. So another follow-up I have from that is, you know, lithium has obviously has been in the news now, obviously for, for many years, you know, having to do with electric vehicles and all that. And, you know, talk, can you give us a little more color as to the lithium that you're now producing as a result of, you know, having the technology to extract it from the wastewater, from oil and gas versus some of the folks that are saying, no, we're going out and, you know, 
doing some full on exploration at these various, you know, areas where we think that there's high grade lithium or whatnot, you know, what, what's, what's mind the gap for me. So here are some facts. Standard lithium, they're going after what I would call a greenfield operation in the smackover. Now for them to get to where they are today to producing their first molecule of lithium, they need to spend $1.4 billion in infrastructure to get there. That's a big number. That takes time. There's a lot of hurdles. There's a lot of regulations to go through. Lithium Americas, there's a lot of talk about Lithium Americas these days. For them to get to where they are to production, and they're talking about production in 2028, they need to spend $2.9 billion. A lot of that's an in infrastructure. The difference with us is we don't spend money on that infrastructure. So that water is being disposed of today in Texas. If we are here or not there. So what we have to do, that whole component of build out in infrastructure, we just don't have to deal with. And that's a major strategic advantage for us for one, getting into production sooner and also two, scaling up. So what we're able to do with I mean, what we've publicly said is this year we've processed over 250,000 barrels of produced water for extracting lithium. You can't do that unless the infrastructure is in place. Most people talk about a bench scale or a pilot scale. This is an operation based on facilities that are producing today. So what we've been able to do is fast track because we focus on extracting lithium. We don't focus on building infrastructure. And that's the fundamental difference between us and others. Here's the thing, the customers that we're dealing with are industrial customers. So we're dealing with, you know, a couple of customers, they need a thousand tons per annum. This isn't the car companies like the Fords and GMs. They're industrial customers. Most of the lithium in the world is being directed to China right now because they do all the refining in China. What we're able to do is we're doing our production in the field, we're doing our refining in the field, and we can scale up in a measured approach. Why? Because we don't have the huge infrastructure build out to start. So we can fulfill those smaller contracts, and then we can scale up and build to a large size lithium producer. So how many oil and gas companies are you currently working with right now? Well, right now, that's probably the doing, number one question I'm sure you get when it comes yeah. to <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we're what we're focused in is on the water side and the disposal side. And there are a number of large operators down here in Texas. Um, we're in discussions with quite a few of them. Um, obviously, not literally to say exactly who we're talking with right now, but I think what's really relevant is we're in the field, we're producing, we're extracting today. And we're about to start refining in Q4, which is fundamentally different from everyone else. I haven't seen anyone else doing it out here. Competition will come. We focus specifically on a niche in the market, which is a large niche. And so we think that we've got a competitive advantage to getting into lithium production sooner than the rest. Very interesting. I have a million more questions, but I will leave that to everyone else to ask when they come and see you <laughs> at the conference. So, you know, to close this out here today, from what you can tell us, what would you say are some of the company's value catalysts and goals for the rest of 25 going into 26? You bet. Our number one catalyst and our key goal this quarter in the Q4 of 25 is starting lithium refining. We know we can extract the lithium. We've done the test. Now we have to start refining product. Our number one target from a refining perspective is we've been starting to give samples to potential customers, but they're lab samples. They want to see bulk samples. A bulk sample is a ton of lithium. So with the refining unit that's arriving on site with us in Q4, we're going to be able to deliver refined product to customers. That's going to drive 2026, where we're going to start moving from bulk samples to customers to starting to sign off, take agreements and get into commercial production as we move into 27. Very good. All right, well, Alex, with that, where can our audience go and find more information on Liberty Stream? Uh, best place is either on our website and and what we're doing right now. So libertystream.com is what we're doing. And, uh, you know, look forward to having the opportunity to speak with uh, a number of folks at uh, your conference. Very good. Well, Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. Really do appreciate it. Good luck, stay safe, and I'll, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Great to speak with you today. Thank you.